very, very welcome to this video on Landmans 365 customer service. In this video, we are going to focus on service level agreements. And what are they? Let's have a quick look and let's start off by actually seeing an example of how this looks like. If you're not familiar with how to create cases and what they are and what is Dynamics 365 customer service, I recommend you watch my video on Dynamics 365 customer service to give, get a high level overview. But for this one, I'm going to create a new case with a title delivery issue. The, right, the, the title doesn't matter. What's, what matters is what we set up as SLAs. And, and I have set up two logics. If I create, in one case, I'm going to use a customer who, who has less annual revenue. Um, so they are a smaller client. Uh, for, for this company. And the second thing is I'm going to use someone more than 100K revenue. So I'll start off with, with using someone who has uh, a lower revenue for me and they have an SLA of 10 days. So the case needs to be resolved in 10 days. And this is very important for your agents. So, because they would not remember or they cannot keep and calculating and check and solve cases accordingly. So now this becomes permanent. Whenever you create a case, the system does it for you. The agent doesn't need to bother with checking the annual revenue of customers and then mentioning somewhere this SLA needs to be resolved in this block line. I find this as a very remarkable feature because here the agent, all they need to do is just create a case and the system will calculate what the SLA has been agreed with the customer by you as the company. In this case, I see it's 10 days and, that, and it's in timer. So every time I come back as an agent, I see this timer appear for me. You could also find more details on SLAs here where you will also see what is the end time and the warning time. So warning time is basically where you can also set up rules to warn users or uh, send an email. I have not set that up yet, but that's also possible. That requires a little bit of knowledge of Power Automate and that's why we're going to keep it for, for the more advanced lesson. So I said I set up, I have set up two accounts. In this one, the SLA is going to be 10 days because it's a smaller client. And if you look at the amount I have clicked on the customer record, then my revenue is 15K, right? But now I'm gonna use a customer that is going to have 200K. So I'm gonna mention again, delivery issue two. And now I'm gonna select this record. And this is a big customer for me. They, they, they have 200K. So when I say it, the SLA should be two days. Two days, as you can see. Right? So this is a very cool feature, saves a lot of time, automates a lot of things in your organization, has a very cascaded instruction all the way down to your every agent that you can think of. Now that, now that we have seen how SLAs work, what exactly they mean, right? Let's get more into the details. And by the way, before we get into the details, one more important thing, this SLA logic can be set up for different kinds of logic. Yeah? So if you have certain case types which require more attention, you can set up separate SLA days for them. And if you have valuable customers and you want to distinguish based on customers, that's also possible. So it, it's not really tied only to a, a, a customer sort, uh, customer type, but it's also tied to any other fields that you can imagine on a case and the related entity. So tomorrow I can have a case saying, uh, I have a boiler issue and the boilers are supposed to be closed on time. Yes, of course. If you said that as logic, it should be there. All right. Now that we've talked about on a high level, we're going to do, go in, in, in the details. And for that, we need to go on the back end. So this is the customer service hub that your agents use, but more as an administrator or as a consultant, I would recommend using customer service admin center. This is also recommended by Microsoft. And in this, you already see there is a section called service terms and you have multiple different subsections here. And here, you can see how service level agreements and where they are created. But before I really get into the service level agreement part, I want to talk a little bit about KPIs. Because now we say the case needs to be resolved in eight days or 10 days. What if a company has other KPIs? Of course, there are options for that. Microsoft offers out of the box or as a standard two KPIs. One that I've already used to resolve by KPI, but you can create your own KPIs because every organization is unique and they can have their own KPI. So I will say first, response by. And here I'll select again the entity as a case because we are gonna set it up for cases. And you see there's one more KPI. So we have resolved by KPI, we have used it and we are gonna use response by KPI. If you want to create more KPIs besides the two, that's also possible, but we're gonna see that at the end of the video. And then create it on. So here you can basically, so 
select any date that you want, any date that exists on, 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 on a case. I want to calculate my SLA since the creation, but you could have a date such as follow up or, or uh, modified on, modified on maybe not, but something that's more logical also to the use case. So when I do this, I can, I can save it. And once it is saved, what is also very important is to activate it. Otherwise it will not work. Now I've activated it. Now I can go back and now I have two active SLA KPIs. So in our example, we, 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 we saw how we can add more KPIs. The third KPI adding, we're going to use it for the last video. So we're going to go and see how SLAs are set up. When I click on manage, I see one of the SLAs. What I can do is I can deactivate it. If you, if you want to create it from the scratch, you can press new and start filling up the fields, but we're going to have a look at the existing one. It's, it's basically simple. It's, 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 it's the same story. First, I need to deactivate SLA before editing it. You see that I have added two logics already. So high revenue customer for KPI resolve by, and these are the days and the regular one where the days are longer. All right. So let's have a look at one of them. So when I click on high revenue customer, what I see is this is the name. It can change the KPI, and then it's still loading the applicable when and, and success conditions. These are actually also this one, Warner for duration. These are one of the fundamental and most important part of setting up SLA item for it to actually work. So condition here I've specified my customer account, check the annual revenue. If it is greater than or equal to 100K, that's when it, SLA item needs to apply. Simple, easy, easy. And when is it actually succeeding? It's succeeding when the status changes to resolve or cancel for the case. So whenever I mark a case, case as closed or whenever I close a case, it should basically pass as succeeded. However, if I do not resolve the case in the given time frame of the SLA, then it will mark it as failed. Okay, so not only the status needs to be changed. So when you check change the status, if it falls under the time, it's marked as succeeded. But if it has already failed, then you basically cannot change it anymore. And then here you can specify how many days. It's a duration field, so you can use days, months, hours, um, yeah, days, hours, or uh, minutes. Okay, I'll close this and we'll create an, we'll set up a new KPI now. Okay, so I'll say create a new SLA item. Sorry, I meant SLA item. So I'm gonna say first response by. And in this KPI, I will not select response by. They already have a couple of them. So we're gonna be fair and we're gonna select first response by. And here we're gonna select an applicable one. And for this case, I'm gonna say, okay, applicable one title contains data because this basically needs to be applicable every time. So I'm just filling in a fake, fake logic. So I, sorry, I said contains, it should be contains data. And when should it pass? Let's say it should pass when the status reason, where are you? Yes, status reason equals waiting for details, which means that we have sent an email to the customer or we have changed the, the status waiting for details, we have responded already, and then it should basically pass. And how much time do we have to respond as an agent? So for all the cases, so right now, earlier I made a segregation to to high customers and low customers. This time I'm going to keep it generic so that it should be applicable every for every case, even if it's a low paying customer or a high paying customer. So let's say it should warn after two hours and it should succeed in four hours. So this is our setup on a SLA KPI item. Now we can save and close them. We have our three KPIs, but it's in draft. So we're going to activate it now. And once we activate it, we're going to set it also as the default one. Okay, now that we've done it, let's go back to our customer service hub. In the customer service hub, to test it, we're going to create a new case. So title is delivery issue, part three, let's see what that case. Okay, I'll just select any subject, although it doesn't matter. Select any customer, because it doesn't matter. And when I create a case, then the SLA should start to run off. Okay, so 
So we see that we have two SLAs now, right? So this is quite handy. As I mentioned, we can have more than one SLAs tied to a case. I can have a third one as well, fourth one as well. Right? So, and you can also see more details on an SLA list. So next time when a case is in comes in, oh, I only have four hours to respond to this case. Let's do that already. So when they actually responded, and here the, the success condition is super important. So we're gonna see the success conditions as well. So first, I'm gonna mark this from the status to from in progress to waiting for details, because that's the success criteria for our first response. In. If we respond within the next four hours, it will be marked as succeeded, it will be doing succeeded, yeah, right? It succeeded. And now, for our second KPI, if we also resolve it, then that's also succeeded. So when you click on resolve button, you get this prompt, agreed with customer and resolve it. Takes a bit of a time and succeeded. Awesome. See, this is how it works. Now that we've talked about SLAs and how they work and how cool they are, how much time they save for your agents, because if you're an agent, imagine your life, if you have to go and check for every customer, what are the things that are important? So what is the revenue? And based on the revenue calculating, okay, this should be the SLA and then filling it up here or keeping a track of that somewhere in Excel. Imagine the system calculates and shows it on your screen so that they always have an overview. And not just an overview, but as a timer, right? Okay, so this is done. Now let's move to the third part that we said. If we want to add a third KPI field, how do we do that? So for that reason, I'm gonna go back to again service terms and say service KPI, and I'm gonna say new. And this time I want a KPI called uh, investigation by. Investigate, investigate by, investigate by. And here, what? Oh, case, and ah, this was the moment of surprise. What, only two KPIs? So we need to have a third KPI that should be called investigate by. How do we get that here? Because Microsoft today does not allow us to do it now. So there is a way for that. You need to go to your Power Apps, to the right environment, to the right solution, and you need to go to SLA KPI instance, the table. Let me see, and I'm gonna add one of the tables to the solution, and it will be called SLA KPI instance. Next. And add. Right? And now we can, oh, whoopsie, back to solutions. I will open my customer service solution again. And in the table, KPI instance, then you have relationships. What's important is that in this one, we create a new relationship and the relationship is going to be one to many. And here we can say, I want a relationship from SLA KPI instance towards case. Yes. And let the, the, it will ask you what the logical name or the name for this would be. Then I will say investigate by KPI, right? And I think those are some details that are important. Everything else is okay. And then you say done. Easy, easy. So when you, when you click on done, what is also very important is to publish it. Because if you don't publish it, then you are not going to see that field appearing back. So while it saves it, let's go back and, and see if we can uh, talk a little bit more about SLA KPI. I think my publishing is done. Um, before you set up any SLAs and you're in discussion with a customer or you are you want to set up SLAs for your own company, what's very important to understand a few things from the business. One, what are the KPIs that you want to measure? Probably it's first response, probably is resolved by but there can be more. So it's very important to know what are the KPIs and when are, what are the conditions when they should be applicable and what are the days and how long are they applicable for? So all those things, while you saw, while uh, me, me trying to set that up, all those are important questions to ask before you actually start setting that up. But it's very good to know the possibilities of how long, how much it is possible for you to customize the system. So our relationship has been published, I think so. And we say new 
you say investigate by and let's see if we can select the entity case we earlier had only two options first response by and result table kpis but this time we have three and when should it be applicable from let's say it should be applicable also from creation right and we save it and we activate it and then we go back and it should be fine now. Now you should be able to use this KPI also in your SLS. All right, that was everything that I wanted to tell you in this demo. I hope this was helpful. If you have any accelerated related remarks, questions, or challenges, feel free to post comments on the video. Happy learning.